If you live and desire luxury, love a good life and crave for great interior and architectural designs, then the Lux Interiors is the show for you. Join us on a journey that showcases style, luxurious homes, introduces you to the latest technology, trends and product designs. Today on the show, we tap into our rich cultural heritage, ideas and designs that scream India. So let's begin. Krishna vs. Adarsh, two designers with dramatically different versions of India. Cool off Maharaja style with these fans for your home. Pillow talk, pretty or quirky, take a pick. And the first of many lists to come. Indian must have for your home. Our styles are a reflection of our personality. With a country that comes with so many different cultures, comes an endless explosion of ideas. Today we take you to designer Krishna Mehta's home, a home filled with print and colour. Let's take a look at how he plays with the art and craft of mixing and matching. Hi, I'm Krishna Mehta and welcome to my beautiful home. I am the design director of India Circus, which means my life is full of colour. And as you can see, my home is nothing but full of colour, with little knickknacks from all over the world. I personally believe in the principle of colour therapy. I think that colour is a very important part of your life. And if you see the colours I've used at home, it's it sort of carefully placed in, and, and reflects a certain style. It's not like live out loud like mad colour. So how the colours are mixed and matched within the home, how it plays with the cushions, how it plays with the rug, how it plays with the floor, which is this quota stone which sort of tones down the whole thing, I think is very important. I think cushions are the most beautiful, simplest accessory. Just as, I mean, if you see a lady and the lady wears jewellery and, and wears an outfit, how it transforms the way she looks. I think similarly cushions does that to a house, to a couch. And it's a very simple thing because you have a clean, uh, you have a clean classic coloured couch, you throw in some bright cushions, it changes the whole look of the space. So I think from a home point of view, it's the simplest, most beautiful accessory. It creates space, it creates depth, it looks good and everybody loves cushions. I think art also is a very important part of a house and in my case it's very difficult because I also create a lot of art. So earlier my house had only my work and now I think my house has a nice mix of other artists as well as my work. I've been collecting work as well. So if you look at this work here, this is one of my works from a few years ago from a Golconda collection I had done. The work right next to that is uh, the famous Jogen Chaudhary who is a beautiful Bengali artist. Now I'm in the process of evolving and, and also collecting work and I only wish I had a bigger house. I think lighting as well, uh, what people don't understand is it's the most important part of the space. I mean, you can have a stunning home and suddenly if you, your whole ceiling is full of halogens. Uh, that home loses its warmth and, its, and, and that cosy feeling. So I think uh, whether it's um, regular lamp light or fairy lights or candle light, to me, how a home is lit in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night is, is very important. When you have lamps, which is floor lights, uh, to me is much nicer than having ceiling lights. I mean ceiling lights you can put on when you know when you need them on. Otherwise I think light being lifted from the floor is a much nicer feeling than coming from the ceiling. You know we actually if a robber came to this house there's nothing to rob. He'd, he'd look at the house and say like wo ye kya hai, wo kya hai. So uh, the house wasn't done at a seriously high expense. What I have done is I bought in some colour. I bought in some light, I bought in some very simple furniture and that's it, I just put the house together. I mean the only thing of some value is, is the artwork, otherwise this whole house was done in a very sort of budget style, not that, not that there was a budget, it was just done in a way that uh, it's very affordable. I think if you're doing up your house, I, I don't hesitate to bring in colour. Now you don't have to go as wild as this, but certainly even if you keep your walls classic and your upholstery classic and everything classic, the colour can come in a burst of colour can come in just through your accessories, just through your cushions, through your vases, through the flowers, through plant life, through, uh, through a rug. I mean, there's so many ways uh, colour can come into your house. And the good news about that is you can throw it away and bring new colour in. So you're not stuck to anything. So if you don't want to recolour your wall, if you don't want to do something crazy with the upholstery, don't. But bring in accessories that, 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 will, that suit your space. And I feel that when, even you'll see when people visit, they see colour and it excites them. 
So I think that's very important. I feel a lot of people today are using no color, but I think color is a very happy feeling. Art has its own language and is seen differently by different people. In fact, collecting art is an art itself. It requires a lot of commitment, time, space and money. Here are our recommendations of some of the top artists, upcoming and famous. Should you pick this or that? Colourful or subtle? Large canvases or small? If these questions have stopped you from buying art before, then let the experts give you useful tips. When we recommend artworks to a client, it's very important for us to understand their budget, their personal taste and of course the style of their home. I think it's important if you're planning on putting together a group of works by different artists into the same room, it's important that those works uh, speak to each other and are harmonious. You don't want works fighting against each other. When I'm looking at buying art for my own home, I'm looking at what really resonates with me. I'm also looking at something which I know I can live with for several years. Great, so that takes care of a few apprehensions. Now for the main hurdle. Whose art do you pick? Our experts list out their favourites for you. Budget not being an issue, we suggest a variety of artworks uh, and artists. Uh, one of them is of course Subodh Gupta. Subodh is primarily a sculptor but he also makes paintings. He's made some video works and the sculptures come in many different sizes and shapes and, and materials. Ranbir Kaleka combines paintings, digital works, projections. It's something that's quite magical and something which is quite unusual and unexpected. Asim Waqif is one of the younger generation well, multidisciplinary kind of an artist. He does video, he does uh, photography, he does installations, he does wall works. Uh, one never fully knows where one discipline ends and where the other one begins. Nalini Malani is mostly known for her reverse paintings on acrylic. Another artist we've been working with for a long time is Anita Dubey, who's primarily a sculptor, but also makes photographs and videos and installations. Um, I think it's important when you're looking at art to try to buy works that are the primary medium the artist is known for. Shiba Chachi works with a particular technique called a moving image light box. It looks as though you're looking at a video screen, but actually it is a slowly moving transparent layer in the light box and it's quite magical. If you want to patronize the younger generation and buy art that is aesthetic and yet not too pricey, we list out a few options for you. So established or upcoming artists, take your pick. It's about a spiritual being, Buddha or Krishna and Jesus, all these are spiritual beings. Though they are bodily not present here at this time, their presence can be felt. They are watching you, they are watching us all the time. And that's what the message is all about. Inspiration for these paintings comes from architectural spaces and how uh, we as individuals are so fragmented as identities. And uh, I've used layers and layers of linseed oil to build up the visual. I take a photo from the camera and print it on the canvas so that it looks like a painting. And there is no difference in painting and photography. Whether you decide to patronize the younger generation or go ahead and flaunt the works of well-known artists, you now have a plethora of options to choose from. Look up and walk, a common instruction given to all of us while growing up. What if the next time you walk into a luxury space, heads up, and you notice that the fan on the ceiling is not just a piece of functionality, but instead a luxurious statement. Take a look. We are into the business of luxury ceiling fans. Normally in India what we get is fans that are purely functional. What we thought is we could bring about a change in this particular concept, add a touch of colour as well as aesthetics to your room. That's why Luxair began. The palm designer fan is something which is very close to my heart. 
It's got a very nice retro feel to it, which makes you go back in time. It's also weatherproof coated blades, which, is, which means that you can use it both indoors as well as outdoors. The classic fan of ours has an old world charm to it. It has wooden reversible blades, a whisper quiet technology, and a winter function, which means it can run in the reverse direction in winter, saving you some energy as well. The Mayfair is a glossy colonial fan. It's got eight strikingly beautiful colors, which are glossy in nature. What is special about the Mayfair is that it is flush mountable. That means it can be used for ceilings, low ceilings, which are less than nine feet. The Viper fan has got five curved wooden blades, which has got a stunning design as well as exceptional air movement. It also has a mood lighting feature, which means that you can dim and dip the light to your satisfaction. What's exciting is that it can also be upgraded to an LED version in the light kit, which means that you can save enormous amount of electricity. The Spinnaker fan comes in five strikingly bold colors. What's different in the blades, it's actually made of cloth. It's got a special canvas plate technology, which you can actually wash and iron and put it back. The market is filled with home stores, products and designs. So much that it will either leave you confused or then dependent on a designer. Your confusion is now over, so sit back and enjoy our list of Indian-inspired must-haves. Ideas that will help give your home a luxurious facelift. They started off as an accessory for the Indian man's head. You will find versions of it all around India. Today you have the option of sitting on them. Meet the turban stool. Designed by Avni Sechpal, sitting on the head just got a whole new meaning. If it's a beautiful cage, you might as well find yourself comfortably perched in it. This chair from Home of the Traveller, made out of wood and a soft seat, is the kind of head turner you want to flaunt in your living room. How many things can a parat or a don't-eating tray be used for? You'd say it's obvious, one thing, kneading. The brand clove says so much more. It can be used as a curious installation and it can be used to spread some light. Nothing is a faster Indian fix than covering large surface areas of your space with pure Indianness. Rugs and dharis are just what we recommend. From colourful recycled options to motifs that scream India, there is no dearth of options here. Trunks and chests are a favourite with a lot of people. After all, they look beautiful and store all things precious. But this treasure is a single-seater sofa. With its luxurious button pinch style, contrasted with the chest for a frame, this is truly precious. We're coming back to furniture, this time with a focus on tables. Call it the influence of our colonised past, but this coin centre table is a must-have. And while we're on tables, inlays of feathers and precious stone are regal and suit the Indian palette with its love for royalty. A thali is as Indian as it can get, and eating in this one will make sure you eat just like an Indian. This Crescent Thali from Anantaya will surely be a show stealer in your dinnerware collection. The word India is synonymous with inspiration and we've only just touched the surface. Let's take a quick break and after that... Coming up next, what do these camels, coconut pickers and fish have in common? The answer in just a bit. Welcome back to Lux Interiors with me, Devika Gupta. Gone are the days when scenes of the wild or even embroideries were limited to fine saris, paintings or then just carpets. Today, India, its roots, its culture can be found splashed all over its linen, upholstery and even cushions. All you have to do is decide what you want. We're Safa Massey, we make hand-printed home textiles inspired by our travels. Yeah. And I'm Sarah Fotheringham. 
I'm one in the sinks. I, I'm from the UK, so like it's a mixture of that Indian and sort of Western sort of yeah. sensibility. And also, I mean, actually, before I came to India, like which was nearly five years ago when I came travelling, um, all my drawings were black and white, like everything was black and white. And yeah. then <laughs> it completely Penny. changed. Like I started drawing with these felt tip sketches, and that's where the Matai print came from. My favourite is uh, out of uh, uh, the Kerala collection, the LFE collection, which is uh, the coconut palm picker's orange quilt. It tells you the story of a coconut palm picker who climbs up onto the palm tree and you know plucks the coconuts. And we combine it with the palm leaves on the other side and uh, it makes it look very nice. Each product sort of like reminds you if you've been to that place or reminds you if you've heard of that some you know of that place so it sort of like you know tells you a story about that particular place that is inspired from it started off as a little kind of scribble in my sketchbook and then we kind of expanded on that to yeah. create this i mean oh, each print starts off with something very small and then you sort of like you know you spend a lot of time on perfecting yeah. that pattern you know, what the you idea, actually, yeah, yeah, the idea, yeah, like what you actually need, yeah. So the different, different camels print um, is inspired by the idea that from afar all camels look the same really. I mean, you think a camel is a camel, but then when you get up close, um, at the Pushka Camel Fair, they're particularly decorated. Each camel has yeah. a particular style. They might have, you know, a nose ring. They might yeah. have, like, dyed orange hair. They might be shaved in a particular way or have motifs drawn on them. Yeah. The Indianness comes from the theme in a sense. I mean, it's it's Indian inspired, but it's not necessarily typically, you know, what is always depicted. We're made in India, we are about India, we're very proud of what we do. When she started the company had been is basically an army wife and she's travelled the country over and she's very fascinated by all the techniques. There's so much variety, I don't think any other country gives the kind of variety of technique that India gives. So basically the Saratahanda line is a really good mix in our mind of uh, Indian motifs and Indian design but done in a very contemporary way. I think where that comes up the most is like we'll take a paisley pattern but we've done it on like a nude colour, like a champagne colour or a taupe colour which is not usually, is not the case. And uh, we've done a lot of handwork. There is really the Zardozi work that is being done, the Adda work, and most of us think of Adda and we think of bling and we think of gold and silver, but we've done it in ivory. So I think that mix is what makes special in terms of the mix of the Indianness, the traditional and the contemporary. To me, a room grounded in neutrals with then a splash of colour is the best way to go. That's the way we tend to do up our spaces. The other thing, the other two motives that come to mind are the is the paisley and is the ikat. They've been around for really long and they can be done in different ways. And again, if you mix colour, then that's really the mix of Indianness and a slightly more contemporary uh, way of doing up your space. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we get you access to designer Adarsh Gill's Indo-Colonial Home and some expert advice which will help give your homes a makeover. Where do you spend a majority of your time in your house? Okay, so I spend mine in the bathroom. It needs to be aesthetically pleasing and equipped with the perfect hygienic component. A bidet is an equally important part of the bathroom and needs a lot of attention. Let's take a look at what Kola has to offer. The best part about being Indian is that the idea of water to refresh and stay hygienic after one's morning chores is not an alien concept. What if your bathroom routine had the tempting proposition of going through the entire experience hands-free? With Kola, your wish just became reality. 
The Pure Clean Bidet Seat has been designed for comfort as you sanitize yourself. Its features like the retractable wand, rear and front wash and water pressure control allow for maximum hygiene with zero scope for discomfort. A single easy to use lever to control all functions makes things so simple. The best part is it doesn't need massive amounts of space to install it. So say goodbye to toilet paper and health faucets as you redo your bathroom this time. Try a hands-free bidet and save your hands for much greater things. Being Indian means bringing home a variety of styles. Ideas that have been inspired by the ancient, the Mughal, the colonial and the modern. Today we turn the spotlight on designer Adarsh Gill's home, a home that clearly reflects her love for the colonial era. Hi, I'm Adarsh Gill. I'm going to take you around my house. It's very eclectic decor. It is old and new mixed together and very pastel shades with a lot of uh, glass and crystal used. I mixed modern and old together in my living room. I've always loved silver. Silver is actually to start with, it's very good to have in the house, it's peaceful. Even Vastu says it's good to have in the house. And if you can afford it, there's nothing like it. This veranda is done in a very colonial feeling. Jula is colonial, the Nandis are colonial, the paintings are colonial. This Jula I love because it's the carving is beautiful, it's very intricate. It's also of a size that fits in. Larger jewelers are difficult to fit in. This is my dining room, and it's true colonial. The dining set is made in silver, though the style is very chip and ill. The sideboard and the side tables are in wood, and those are antique as well. It's 1859 period. I quite like this porcelain blue. The light blue is complemented with a very dark royal blue. It enhances the lighter color. Last but not the least, an opportunity for you to get your home style by one of the experts we feature. All you need to do is send us a few photographs and your requirements at luxinteriors at ndtvgoodtimes.com. So until next week, live a good life, goodbye.